consume more than we ever could in the past. We can travel further than we ever could in the past. We passed, what, one planet consumption in 1987? You know, we're at like, what, 5.3 in the United States now? Like, what the hell are we gonna be at in 2020? I don't buy stuff all the time, but yeah, I just bought an iPhone, so I got rid of my Blackberry. No, I didn't wait till it clunked out on me, which I guess if you were trying to be more eco-conscious, you would wait till it, it failed and then you'd replace it, but it's not a sacrifice I'm willing to make yet. When I buy, I want to buy quality and I want to try to buy where, yeah, maybe more expensive, but at least it's it's been made fairly and it's made out of the right materials. Oh, this one's. They have the milk and the glass, and they, you know, you return it. I picked up these couches at a Goodwill store near my parents' house. Katrina, all she buys is thrift stuff. And we bring all our stuff back to thrift shops, and you know, you're still consuming. There's still a carbon yeah. footprint in a thrift shop. You're still consuming and buying stuff, but it's a lot smaller because you're reusing that embodied energy, you're reusing that product, and then you reuse it again when you hand it back the next time. I guess that everybody has their own little dirty habit. My footprint's probably bigger because our flights back to Australia are massive. We have to go see her family. Like, right now, she wants to go once a year at least. That's why we don't eat meat, is because we fly so much. Really? Yeah. That's why we stopped. I didn't know that. I know. We're not willing to give up visiting our families. Yeah. So yeah. we decided so to we give up something to, else. we try to reduce our footprint. Usually on our bike, we're usually walking or we best about a lot. Behind walking and biking is the best way to get around the city. It carries a, a gallon and a half and it lasts me about a week, a week and a half. So it's been like three bucks. I can do certain things like not eat meat. I can do certain things like try not to consume as much or whatever, but it comes down to it. It's so hard to consume only one planet. There is hope that people will change. I guess I have, I have mixed feelings. I'm pessimistic and optimistic. I'm optimistic because sometimes I see, for example, in residential buildings that the answer is a lot of times very simple. Katrina and myself bought this, this house. We ripped down the back two rooms and put up a new two rooms and an upstairs in the back. Even with what tools and systems and technology we have now, if you build the envelope properly like it's supposed to be built, these buildings consume significantly less energy. We decided to go with a concrete slab which will facilitate the passive heating during the winter time because the sun will be low in the, in the sky, radiate in, heat it up during the day, and re-emit that heat at night, keeping the house very temperate. Like when you're talking about a green house or something, don't throw technology at it, simplify it, a good insulation, a good envelope, proper orientation, proper ventilation, you know, design it properly. Take your time. Put a little bit more, you know, foresight and upfront planning. But when it comes to getting from San Francisco to Melbourne, it's only one way you're really going to go. Find an airplane. So then you got to throw technology at it. There is hope that people will change their own habits for the betterment of the environment. It's not often you see it, especially in my generation, because we are just the ultimate consumers. So I say, yeah, you don't eat meat because of this. So it's part, I hope that that will help people start changing their own atti attitudes. It's also probably just so I can sleep well at night or feel all right with taking a long airplane flight. And that still doesn't get close to saving the amount of carbon that we produce.